So we're going to do this. This is admittedly a little scary. And this is one of those problems, and there are always a bunch of problems in college algebra that deal with making boxes. All right, so from a 15 centimeter by 15 centimeter piece of cardboard, uh, square corners are cut out so that the sides can be folded up into an open top box, which you have here. All right, and with these corners gone, the base of the box is going to be shorter. So the dimensions of this box are going to be 15 minus 2x Fifteen minus two X and the height is X. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is express the volume of the box. Um, express the volume of the box as a function of X. Okay, well, volume equals length times width times height. So that will be length times width. times height. Although it's easier and more common to write the X, since it's all by itself, to write it in front, probably so that it doesn't get lost. Okay, now we're going to be asked for the domain. The domain is based on what numbers, what would the numbers be that would make this not a box? Well, it wouldn't be a box if the length were zero or the width were zero or the height were zero. So you set each of these factors equal to zero, just like when you're solving. And then we really only need to solve one of these. Plus 2x, plus 2x. So we're going to have 15 equals 2x and divide both sides by 2. So x equals 7.5, 7.5. Now what that means is that in order for there to be a length, a width, and a height, x cannot equal zero, and it cannot equal 7.5 or anything greater than 7.5. If it did, say for instance, x were eight, then you'd have 15 minus two times eight, that would be 15 minus 16, which would be a negative length or a negative width. How on earth could you have a negative width and a negative length? So um, our, we're limited here to all of the values between, but not including zero centimeters to 7.5 centimeters. That is not zero, not 7.5, but everything in between, even though some of that is not realistic. I mean, 0 0.001 to 
you still wouldn't have much of a box, but theoretically anyway. All right, so now, how can we find the length and the width and the height? And the answer is we need to graph the volume. That's right, different, different thing, which they have been nice enough to do for you and even to label where the maximum volume is. If you were to take this function and put it into your graphing calculator right here, 15 mi uh, x times 15 minus 2x times 15 minus 2x, you would end up with this graph, and of course it would continue on and continue on and being a cubic, it would eventually go back up. Now, would it do that? Yes, because negative times negative would be positive, and then times, yes, it would end up looking like that. But this is the only part you can use. From there to there. So, of course, you could find the domain just by looking where the graph is above the x-axis, so that the y's are positive, because the y's are the volume. Um, where on the x-axis are the y's positive? Well, right in here. This is 0 to 7.5. All right, now all we have to do is look and see. We already know that the height is X. Ah, 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 no. We don't know that. We don't know that because we haven't worked the problem. However, here's the trick. This, how did I get that? There. This is the maximum volume, okay? Every Y coordinate along this graph gives you a volume for a particular X. Whatever X is, that's your volume. Remember, X is the height. So really, it's between the volume and the height. Well, over here, this is your maximum volume right here. 250, and that occurs at x equals 2.5. Okay, this is the height. That's the maximum volume. The height at the maximum volume is 2.5 centimeters. Now, to find the width and the length, remember they're the same. 15 minus 2x, 15 minus 2x. Well, if we let x equal 2.5, then we'll have 15 minus 2 times 2.5. 2 times 2.5 is 5. Whoa, 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 stop. Five. Fifteen minus five is ten. So two point five, ten, and ten are going to be the dimensions of the box. When it's at its maximum volume, which is what you want. The biggest bang for the buck. So in real life, the domain shows you what dimensions your box needs to be. That is at least what the X needs to be in order for the box to exist at all. Do you have any questions about this? 
The other one is the same idea. They give you a graph. And you're able to answer all the questions from that. They go on to ask, oh yeah, what are the dimensions? Same thing. You look at the graph, but you have to choose which graph is correct. And that's based on your knowledge of quadratics, quadratic functions. What exists up here? Interval, increasing, decreasing, maximum point, maximum value. Do you feel comfortable about that? It would be nice, would be to, nice review to review it. it. Okay. This one's more involved. Let's do this one. Uh, here you have a relative maximum point. Just looking at this, a relative maximum point. At negative two, negative one. And a relative minimum point. at two, negative nine. All right, now we have to answer questions based on this. The relative maximum, you see each of these coordinates has a job, okay? The X coordinate and the Y coordinate. The relative maximum, meaning the relative maximum value, is the Y coordinate, the location of that ma maximum value is at the X coordinate, negative two. Now the relative minimum point to negative nine, okay, the relative minimum, not point, but value, the relative minimum is negative nine, and it's located at positive two. Now, on which intervals are the function increasing and increasing? That's all it's asking. Okay, increasing is going up from left to right. So, I don't know, green. Seems to me green is like blooming, so it's going up. So green, now notice that we change our directions here and we just consider up and up. Okay, and what we do is we look on the x-axis for this, as counterintuitive as that is. We're gonna look on the x-axis and see what part of the x-axis matches up with where the graph is increasing. So this part of the graph and this part of the graph. That's where the graph is going to be increasing. So this interval is negative infinity to negative two. And this interval is positive two to positive infinity. Notice it's all X coordinates. Okay, and all right, so negative infinity to negative two and two to infinity, that's A right here.
Now decreasing, going down, always seems to me like it's red. Right here. That's so short, it's almost a straight line. And the part of the x-axis that matches up with that is from negative two to positive two. So negative two to positive two down here at D. Okay, so there's your answer. You want to discuss this at all. This part's really important to show you the work done by each coordinate. They each have their own job. Okay, and this is another one. But notice it's not as detailed. I think this is a lot more educational. Now here's constant. I don't usually make that red, do I? I usually make it, let's make it purple. Here's constant and here's constant. Just a review of what constant is. And now this part, admittedly, I bet you would like me to do this. I have not consciously, that is, yeah, I haven't chosen problems that look like they'll give you a there is no solution answer. It doesn't mean it's not going to happen. It doesn't mean, you know, because they change values, right? That's what the computer does. It, it changes the, the numbers every time you do the problem. My hope is that both of these have solutions. Okay. That's my little speech. Always considered it a dirty trick. If I would get a no solution on a test. However, I don't believe my teacher was playing by the same rules I was. OK, so here we have. I don't think I was aware of how easy that first part of the test is. I hope everybody does really well. OK, step one. I have to isolate, 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 isolate. I have to isolate the radical, the radical term. That means I'm, since that's a plus two, I'm going to, am I gonna do it? Yeah, I'm gonna, no, I didn't do it. All right, I wanted to. There, I'm gonna have to have the square root of two X minus one equals X minus two. 
And then because I can't solve this until, until I blow up the jail cell and let X out, I'm going to square the left and square the right. So we're going to have 2x minus 1 equals x minus 2 times x minus 2. So we'll have 2x minus 1 equals x squared minus 2x minus 2x plus 4. So I'll have 2x minus 1 equals x squared minus 4x plus 4. Time out for a drink. Um, so I'm going to subtract 2x and subtract 2x. Oh, and add one and add one. So that I get zero plus zero, which is zero. Equals x squared minus six x plus five. And then I solve this. Zero equals x, x minus five minus one. So we'll have x minus five equals zero, x minus one equals zero. Add 5 to both sides, I get x equals 5. Add 1 to both sides, I get x equals 1. Okay, now we have to check both answers because one of them or both of them could be extraneous. So I go back to the original original function, uh, equation. 2x minus 1 plus 2 equals x. Okay, and x equals 5 and x equals 1. Okay, so we're going to do this for x equals 5 and this for x equals 1. So here we go. Two times five minus one under the radical plus two equals x, which is five. So two times five is 10 minus one is nine plus two equals five. The square root of nine is three. 3 plus 2 equals 5. Woohoo! This is going to work. 5 equals 5. Yay! So that means x equals 5 is a solution. Now let's check out 1. The square root of 2 times 1 minus 1 plus 2 equals 1. Uh, 2 times 1 is 2, minus 1 is 1, so the square root of 1 plus 2 equals 1. Now, this isn't going to work, is it? The square root of 1 is 1. Plus 2 equals 1, so 3 equals 1. That is false. So, x equals 1 is not going to be a solution. So you go to the answer box and in the answer box, 
you only write the number five. But one, one is left in the outer darkness. And that appears to be all of the first part of the exam. Seventeen. Ah, no, stop where you are. We have some word problems. OK, we've got a toy rocket. We've got Aki's bicycle designs. And we've got profit. All three of these are important, but given the constraints of time, if there are any, um, because we have 10 more problems to go to cover what you've done before, which problem would you rather have? The toy rocket, Aki's bicycle designs in which he is striving to minimize his cost or the profit function and how revenue minus cost equals profit and we're going to maximize the profit function. The rocket. The rocket, the rocket. okay. All right, there we go. We've got these words are helpful. However, this is the important part right here. <clears throat> they show you where the eight comes from. They show you where the 104 comes from. They don't explain this, but that's the effect of gravity. So, what are we being asked to do with this? All right, a toy rocket is shot vertically into the air from a launch pad eight feet above the ground with an initial velocity, an initial jolt of 104, 104 feet per second. H is how high, the, um, how high in feet above the ground the toy rocket is as every second time goes by. So we want to know the rocket reaches its height in how many seconds and the maximum height reached is. So we're going to be looking for, this is eight feet high, there goes the rocket. And we want the maximum height and how long it takes. Well, T acts like X. And we know that the X coordinate at the maximum, we usually call H, but the problem is you've got an H here. So this is going to be the time, the time at the maximum height. Okay, so this is gonna be H of T. Oh, we could make the, the T, capital T for the time at the maximum height, but that would take too much thinking. So let's not. Instead, let's say, okay, the time, time in seconds, 
to get to the maximum height. is negative b over 2a. Oh, imagine. So negative 104 over, let me make this bigger. Okay, negative 104 over 2 times negative 16. So that'll be negative 104 over negative 32. And that will be negative 104 divided by negative 32. 3.25 seconds, three and a quarter seconds. And the actual maximum height is going to be negative 16 times 3.25 squared plus 104 times 3.25 plus 8. So all I have to do is calculate that, hopefully correctly. So negative 16 times 3.25 squared because 3.25 is positive i don't have to put it in parentheses unless i want to plus 104 times 3.25 plus 8. one hundred seventy seven feet so the max height is and that's how you do it. H, H, the way we normally think of H as in HK. is the X coordinate, remember. So whatever letter is being used to act like X, that's gonna be what your negative B over two A is. And then you just plug that number in for whatever letter is acting like X. Any discussion, any questions about this? And I should have, uh, yeah, given this particular problem. This little guy starts on a launch pad. Okay, just a hint. Remember that profit equals revenue minus cost. And so when you calculate the profit function, you're going to say 790x minus x squared minus parentheses 2000 plus 50x. 
and distribute that minus to both of these. So you'll get 790x minus x squared minus 2000 minus 50x. So you get negative x squared plus 740x minus 2000. That's your profit function. And from there, you can find the maximum profit and the number of items that need to be produced. But you've got to be clear on what's the X. The X is the maximum items. So that's where your negative B over 2A is going to come from. You've got to do this first, even though it's the second question. You've got to have this before before K. That's how you find your K. You need negative B over 2A first. Okay. Now we get to something delightfully, I always thought it was easy. Okay. Um, this is an odd degree. An odd degree polynomial. And a negative leading coefficient. Or leading term. They call this the leading term test. And when you have that combination, odd degree, negative leading term, you're going to have this for your end behavior. So let's label what the others are. Okay, this is even degree. Negative leading term. This is even degree. Positive leading term. I guess I should write positive or pause, P-O-S, but I'm not gonna. This is odd degree, and positive leading term. So you do have to memorize those. It helps if you can remember that the end behavior is like y equals negative x squared, y equals positive x squared. All right erase. Y equals X squared, positive. Um, no, third, 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 negative. Never mind, I lied to you. This is like Y equals X squared. This is the end behavior is like y equals x to the third here. And the end behavior here is like y 
equals negative x to the third. Those are the models. For the end behavior, not what happens in the middle. But out near negative infinity and positive infinity. OK, here. Here we have this incredibly ugly looking thing that looks too scary. But then you notice, OK, it's even degree. Negative leading term. It could only. Look like that. So A would be your answer here. Perfect for flashcards. And then just like this one, even degree, negative leading term, even, ah, 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 this is the trick one. Be careful if you get this one. This is the leading term. Trick question. All right, so this is odd degree. and positive leading term. So that would look like this right here. And it would be good to rewrite it the right way. These people are just trying to mess with you. 0 0.7 x to the seventh plus x to the sixth minus 4.1 x to the fourth. Discussion on this? This just takes raw memorization. OK, now we're talking about zeros and multiplicities. This is already factored for you, so this should be one of the totally easiest problems on the test. This will give you x equals 0. This will give you x equals 3. And this will give you x equals negative four. And there's an understood to the one power there. The powers are the multiplicities. How many times these things happen? So, um, now they're saying the smallest zero, the middle zero, the largest zero. So there's an element of trick question here. Draw your x-axis and just label where these would be in relation to each other. Like that. Whatever is smallest is to the left. Whatever is greatest is to the right. So this is the smallest. This is the largest. And this is zero. Well, this is in the middle. So you're going to have negative four, zero, and three. Negative four has multiplicity one. Three has multiplicity two. And zero has multiplicity six.
These are like miscellaneous little facts about functions. Um, and now you're being asked, OK, the maximum number of real zeros, the maximum number of X intercepts, the maximum number of turning points. Just from looking at it without graphing it. Well, actually, even if you graphed it, it might have fewer real zeros, fewer X intercepts, fewer turning points. So what's the most this can have? It's all determined by the degree. The degree is in control, which means the leading term is in control. Six, because the degree is six. Maximum number of real zeros, six. Maximum number of x-intercepts, six. Maximum number of turning points is six minus one equals five. You don't have to write the six minus one, but the number of turning points will always be one less than the degree. The maximum number, there can be fewer, but the maximum number. Okay, and here, here we've got degree 12. So 12, 12, 11. And number 27 is where we start working today. Which is perfect because it's nine o'clock. Let's take a 10 minute break. And then we'll start doing these. And you're going to like synthetic division. If you ever did long polynomial division, you're going to really like synthetic division. So much easier and quicker. OK. I am going to take a break and I will see you back here in at 910. And we will go to work. <gasps> Professor, before we go, do you mind scrolling up to number 23? No problem. Yes, the tricky one. Yes, because I, I, I knew I missed that one because it. I had went with D as my answer when it should have been, yeah, A. Yeah, I, I almost did that. You've got to, yeah, look at the whole thing. Make sure they're not trying to trick you. Good, good. Any more questions? Okay, I will see you in 10 minutes. <laughs>